All right, welcome back and let's get started. In this particular session, we're going to learn how we will build our web application and some of the concepts that we need to get ourselves familiar with before we proceed to build our web application, right? So there are certain concepts that we need to get ourselves familiar with before we start building our web application. And that's what you're going to do in this particular video. In the subsequent um, video, we're going to um, start by building this app right from scratch, okay? So let's let's get started and then um, see some of these concepts that we need to first understand before we proceed to build our web application. So first, what we need to get to understand is what is called application program and interface API. So why do we need API and what is API? I mean, in the first place. So uh, we have different different programming languages that um, that are used to build the various applications that we deal with. But how do we um, make all these different programming languages communicate with each other? Well, this is made possible using what is called API, right? That is application programming interface, right? So let's see um, a real life example of this so that we can actually get to relate to what we are trying to understand here. So let's say you apply for a passport or um yeah you apply for a passport let's just take that one example um you apply for a passport so normally what you what do you do you submit um you maybe you go to the office you go to the passport office or you apply um via online right so you submit the required document and then uh you wait for reply from the passport office right whether they will grant you the passport or they they will deny um, the passport they will deny you the passport okay so um, you cannot actually go to the passport office by yourself and then start to process this document or you start to process your document and then grant yourself the visa you don't you, you cannot do that right you need to follow certain rules and re regulations right or um, if you take for instance if you order um, something from say Domino's or um, KFC right whether at the, at, the, at, the, at, the, at the restaurant or via online right the, what you do is that you place the order, right? You place the order, then maybe the waiter or the waitress will just um, take it to, to the guy uh, inside there at the kitchen and then the, the, the order will be prepared and then it will be returned back to you, right? You cannot just go to the kitchen by yourself and then prepare your, your order and then take it by yourself, right? You cannot do that. You need to follow certain rules and regulations. You need to place the order. You wait for the order, right? So, um, f so for instance, if you, if you create your own app and uh, you want to use certain functionalities from um, companies like Facebook or Google, right? You cannot assess these functionalities directly. You cannot do that, right? What you can use is what is referred to as the application programming interface, API, right? Which will allow you to make a request to these functionalities and then give you a, a, a result back, okay? So you might have developed your app in a particular language, right? In a particular programming language. And then you make a request to a functionality, which is also developed using another or different um, programming language. But with the help of the API, you can make this request and then get your result. All right, so um, in summary, the API acts as the middleman, which will help you to make a request and then uh, whether in I mean, in the same format or in different format, and then help you to properly communicate with the functionalities that you're requesting for, and then give you the appropriate um, result, okay? Now, why are we going to use PyCharm in this particular project and not the Jupyter Notebook that we started with? Um, well, I mean, there's nothing wrong with the, with the note, um, Jupyter Notebook. I mean, if you're using it for a learning purpose, there's nothing wrong with it. We need, we need something more robust, um, mainly an IDE that is integrated development environment that can help us to create a .py files, right? That will help us to create end-to-end -end applications. Don't forget the Jupyter Notebook has its extension to be .ipynb and not .py, that is .py. Right, it's not um, in the extension of the Jupyter Notebook. Right, if you create a project in the Jupyter Notebook and then you export the project, you see that the extension of it is .ipynb and not .py. Right, so if um, whenever you you try to deploy your application via cloud services, uh, cloud service providers such as AWS or Azure or Google Cloud, they look for a file, um, they look for a, a .py file and not .ipynb file. 
all right so we are going to create our own um, flask api which will help us to be able to deploy our machine learning model but we need something more robust that will help us to create this.py file so you can use any id that you want in this particular video we're going to use um a, a pie charm but you can even use sublime test i mean just a test data to create what we're doing right so be flexible as you want just still with the one that you that, that you're comfortable with right we're going to use um, although we're going to use PyCharm here, but you are still um, allowed to use any 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 ID or any um, tested data that you you are more comfortable with. Okay, so we're going to create our own Flask API. Now, in order to do that, right? In order to do that, um, in order for us to create our Flask API, there are some things that we need to understand, right? And one of the main things um, that we we need to get to understand is what is called a web application development framework. All right, so so far we know what API is, right? So let's get to understand what um, a web application development framework is. Right? So let's break this word down and then see. We know what a web application is, right? That's, um, for instance, if you if you if you, if you think about um, say Booking.com, right? Or Book My Hotel or um, Book My Trip or something like that. I mean, all those are web applications, right? All those are web applications. Um, if you think about the, uh, the 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 development part of of the web application development framework, the development part is just the process of creating your app, right? The development part is the process of creating your app. So we understand these two things. So let's get to understand what a framework is, right? Let's get to understand what um, a framework um, is, right? So we can think of a framework as a collection of libraries, right? We can think of a framework as a collection of libraries now in real life what, what 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 do we understand by a library right normally in at, at the various colleges or at the various um schools um or maybe in the communities we we having um certain libraries um that we have collection of different um books right multiple books so that we can just go there and then um, read those books right so you can bring the same concept to computer science right if we think about um, libraries, it's nothing but a collection of methods, right? That help us to actually, um, that help us to, to actually use when we're, whenever we need it, right? Whenever we need these methods, we can easily use them. So um, a library is just a collection, in computer science, it's just a collection of, um, of, of, of methods that's, that, that we can use as per our requirement, right? So now you can think of um, the web application development framework as a collection of methods, right? That will help us create our web application. Also note that creating a web application needs to follow certain standards, right? And uh, um, I mean, that's, that's why we will actually need these frameworks that contain standard methods for building our web application. For, um, if, if you remember the example that we gave, um, if, you want to, uh, if you want to apply for a, a visa or if you want to apply for a passport, you cannot go to the passport office and then grant yourself a passport. You need to follow certain protocol. You need to follow certain rules and standards, right? So um, these frameworks are going to actually help us to um, create this. They contain standard methods that will actually be able to communicate with other standard methods or other um, standard services that we will need to, to make a request to and then get a result. All right. So, I mean, there are several several web application frameworks that you can you can think of or that you can use. For instance, Django is there, Falcon is there, Ruby on Rails is there, ASP.NET is there, among other others that you can actually um, use. Specifically, we are going to use Flask in this project, right? We're going to use Flask in this project. So, I mean, it's, I mean, we have preference for uh, Flask because you can easily integrate it with with Python, right? And I mean, it's easier to use, it's easier to build, right? So we're going to use that one to build our web application, right? So um, let's have a summary of the things that we know so far, right? So we, we first started by talking of I mean, talking about what uh, an API is, that's an application um, programming interface, what, what it is. We first um, got to understand what it is. And then we also got to understand what a web application development framework is, right? And then um, we also um, got to understand the, the kind of um, application framework that we're going to use that is Flask, right? So we will go ahead and then um, we will start with our Flask. But before that, before that, let's see the flow of the project that we're going to build, All right? Let's see the flow of the project that we're going to build. So um, as I said, we're going to use the, an, um, 
what we did earlier on, we, we started with um, a Zomato data set, then we built, we did, we did an exploratory data analysis, then we built our model, right? So we're going to deploy this model on, on uh, with the help of Flask so that um, other, other restaurants, other restaurants can check their ratings live, right? Via the, via the, um, via the web, right? So they can check this, they can interact with our, our app and then check their ratings, right? With respect to certain features, they can just check their ratings. Our model will be able to predict that. Now, let's see the flow of it. So we have a past data that we have prepared the data um, through the EDA methods that we did earlier on. Then we build our model, right? We've built our model. Then, I mean, we built, we use different, different algorithms to build the model. And then we, we selected the one that was doing better than the extra tree um, regressor. That was the one. Um, that was the one that was doing better, right? And then um, we did, we did, um, we, now we're going to use this, this for feature prediction, right? We're going to use feature, this for feature prediction so that the other um, restaurants can actually make predictions of their ratings. So we will do this via API. So this API will be having our model at the background, which will uh, return their ratings, right? So if they interact with our model, they will, um, the, if we interact with the API, they will have, I mean, indirectly, we will be, uh, we'll be interacting with our model, which will return their ratings for them. Okay, so let's start by building our Flask app, 